hit on some local races. So why don't we start with St. Tammany and the DA's race there. Dr. Silas Lee, I'll start with you because we've talked about restoring integrity to this office. What do you think about the results so far? Cleansing the shadow of Walter Reed. That was yeah. the basic uh, focus of that race. And that's what you saw with the results here. Yes, there will be a runoff. Not su too surprised about Brian Trainer ran a very effective campaign. He also had the uh, endorsement of Jack Strain, but it was a very effective campaign on his part. What do you think are the issues that they need to address? We talked about crime uh, and, of course, redeeming the, the office, the integrity of the office, Mike. Yeah. This is a good case study for Do Campaigns Matter? Hmm. Brian Trainer ran a very good campaign. He had a good campaign infrastructure. He had the support of many elected officials. He had a good fundraising apparatus. He had good, clean, professional commercials. This is a case where it was really on the credentials of each of the candidates running. And he just ran a very effective campaign. No surprise here. The polls called this one right. He's running first. All right, let's move on to Public Service Commissioner's race. Now, that one, Dr. Silas Lee, you were talking about how the ads were so effective. Well, the, in order for the ad to be effective, two things must happen. Yes, they must be effective and they, can't, they must attack your opponent. However, if your opponent does not respond effectively and counter that ad, then that ad does have some sticking power. And that's what you saw in this particular case. The incumbent did not effectively respond and say, look, what they're saying in that ad is not necessarily true, doesn't represent what I did. Did. Uh, he let it just continue to play. So by letting that ad go unresponded to, I think that uh, critically hurt his chances. And that's why we see he is running second. Why this, didn't he respond? Why didn't he fight back? This was a controversial race. Well, we have to, well no one knows except <laughs> the, the, the candidate. But I think he, he recognized that it was going to be difficult. He was p painted in a box at this particular point in time. But he needed to come up with a, an effective response other than, look, I, this is my record and you should vote for me. And once you are hit, you have to respond back. Right. So yeah. Mary Landry and Bill Cassidy went back and forth for a month right. about holes in a chain link fence between Louisiana's non existent border with Mexico. I don't know why they were going back and forth for a month on, on this issue, which doesn't have much salience in Louisiana, but they tit for tat responded to each other. I think that was ineffective. But as Dr. Lee just pointed out, when you have a hit mm -hmm. that really sinks in, like Forrest Bradley Wright did on incumbent Commissioner Eric Scrimetta, you have to respond. Commissioner Scrimetta didn't do that. We're going into a runoff here. This is the shocker of the, of the night, in my opinion. Right. Public Service Commission, hugely important. These are the folks that set your regulatory rates for oil and for electric and gas and all other public utilities. It's kind of a down ballot race, very difficult to get voters' attention, mm -hmm. even though it's awesomely powerful and hugely important. Forrest Bradley Wright did that tonight. Yeah. And it's hard because we were talking about how for a voter, they don't really do their homework in detail, so you have to kind of Show well, in this particular case, what Forrest Wright did, did do, he was able to create a perception about the incumbent that the incumbent did not address. The incumbent should have been, I think, more aggressive in creating a perception and an image that would have naturally negated anything yeah. Forrest Wright did. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. We're going to toss things back over to Scott.